All right, switching gears to talk about Scott Peterson, convicted in 2004 of murdering his wife Lacey and their unborn child. He was back in court today, albeit virtually. You see him here as attorneys with the Los Angeles Innocence Project asked a judge for DNA testing in a renewed effort to exonerate Peterson. Now, after today's status conference hearing, three future hearings have been scheduled. A hearing on a motion to seal proceedings, a hearing on the DNA motions, and a hearing about discovery proceedings. Peterson will attend all three via Zoom from Mule Creek State Prison. This is just southeast of Sacramento. Michael Cardoza is a criminal defense attorney, a former prosecutor working in three of California's district attorney's offices. You have quite the resume, and uh, I met you uh, two decades ago when covering the Scott Peterson trial. <laughs> I don't expect you to remember. It was that long ago, but you have been providing analysis on Mr. Peterson for all these years. Good to see you. Uh, let's start with Thank what, you, happened, likewise. what happened today. Were there any surprises? No, the, there were absolutely no surprises today. I think my initial comment would be with the thousands of cases that are presented to the Innocent Project that they have decided they are going to take this particular one, which begs the question in my mind, do you know something that we don't know? What enticed you to take Peterson's case? Because it's gone up on appeal. As you know, he was convicted of first, second degree murder. He was given the death penalty. Then ultimately, it turned into life without possibility of parole, and he's gone through a new trial motion, all of those denied. So the Innocence Project must know something that we don't, but they're certainly going to vet this evidence, in my opinion, better than the defense did, better than the DA in the case did, and better than the police department did. They're going to tear this thing up and vet all of the evidence. Their first step is to get a hold of that evidence, which I guarantee you the district attorney's office is going to fight. Well, according to the filings from the LA Innocence Project, they have uh, a portion of a bloodied mattress that was found mm -hmm. inside a burned out van that was linked to a burglary that took place that night. Here's images, this is from ABC News, and this is the image of that burned out van, where they seem to think that if Lacey's DNA is on here, then this would you know, be explosive information. Do you think that the judge will allow testing of that DNA evidence? Oh, absolutely, she's going to allow testing of that. And so people understand what we're talking about the day Lacey was kidnapped, allegedly there was a burglary across the street from where she lived. And because of that, they think that she saw the burglary go down, that those burglars kidnapped her and eventually killed her. The police are saying, no, the burglary happened the day after she disappeared. So that has nothing to do with this. That's why if the Innocence Project is able to show through their forensic experts that there is Lacey's DNA on that mattress, then that puts her in the hands of those burglars and you can point to them for her death and not Skeeter Peterson. That's why this evidence is so important. You've been following this case for decades, as I mentioned. Where do you think it goes yes. from, from here? <laughs> um, uh, do you actually think that Scott Peterson could be a free man one day? Well, if, if, if they can show with DNA evidence, with scientific evidence, that he did not commit the crime, yes, then it's possible. But one good thing is this will finally put the case to rest. As I said, mm -hmm. they're great lawyers in that Innocence Project in L.A. They've got money to spend, which is good to vet all the evidence. So if they can show it wasn't him circumstantially, then he shouldn't be in prison. And if it shows quite the opposite, or if there's an absence, then this case, after all these years, should finally come to an end and, and let the Rocha family alone and let them be at peace finally. I, my heart goes out to yeah, them of course. because this is the case that just won't go away. Yeah. But we don't want to keep a guilty guy in jail. And there was all sorts of problems with this trial, yeah. in my opinion. Before I let you go, I just want to get your thoughts on, sure. you know, because it's sort of a shock to the system to see him after all these years. What you, would you make of yes. his appearance? Well, he's getting older like I am. And, well, uh, me too. You know, you he looks different. 
Yeah, and he, he looks different, but he looks good. And a lot of people are probably asking, well, why doesn't he come to court? When they're in state prison, they don't want to be moved. It's really inconvenient in that sense. And his appearance in the courtroom is not going to make a whit of difference. This is all legalese, technicalities, arguing about, and I guarantee you that those discovery motions on those court dates are going to be epic battles because the mm. police and the DA are going to fight the innocent project from getting that evidence. They don't want to give it to them. Okay. So I, I'm really looking forward to those battles in the court. Well, perhaps we'll have you back, uh, Mr. Michael Cardoza. Okay. We appreciate you. Thanks for being with us tonight here in Los Angeles. Take care of yourself and stay healthy. Okay, you too. Thank you.